Welcome to TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. I'm joined once again by film historian Donald Bogle, who has written extensively on the history of black actors and the characters they play in the movies. He's the author of TCM's Hollywood Black, the stars, the films, the filmmakers. We're in the middle of a lineup of so-called problem films, all from 1949. Up next, James Edwards stars in Home of the Brave yeah. uh, is a good film, and uh, James Edwards is a really powerful yeah, actor. Yes, he, he is a powerful actor. And, you know, in this cycle of, of problem pictures, this was the first to be released. This was based on a play by Arthur Lorenz, and the play had dealt with discrimination in the military. This is set in the Pacific during World War World, II, yes. and it's a, a, about a mission. Special mission. Four soldiers take, and one of them is black. Yes, and originally the play was dealing with anti-Semitism, and they decided that the, the Jewish character would be made black in the movie because the anti-Semitism had already been dealt with with movies like Gentleman's Agreement and Crossfire. So that's what, what, what happens here. And um, James Edwards um, is, is this soldier. I love the title, Home of the Brave, and, of course, Land of the Free. And here he is really, he's, he's a dedicated soldier. Yeah, we, for our, we're first exposure to him as he has volunteered he's for this volunteered, dangerous mission. He's yeah. volunteered, and some of the others are trying to, are, are, are griping about this mission. Right, figuring he, out a way to get yeah. out of it. Yeah, and so he goes on it and fighting for, you know, in a sense, America, and he, he is the victim of these really horrible racist comments and, and, and taunts, and um, and he, he then has to really um, examine aspects of his entire life. Yeah, because it doesn't just touch on the racism he faces in the military. It sort of lets us know that this is a guy who has grown up. Yeah, it's with, the American way of life. Right, experience. This right. is, if you're black in America and you yeah. live anywhere around any white people, this is the circumstance that yeah. you're going to grow up yeah. in. Yeah, but James Edwards is, is really at the center of this movie. And he's really a startling presence in Hollywood, because he's really the first of this new style black actor coming to the movies. He's, he's dramatic, he's serious, he's quite intelligent. Remember, he precedes Sidney Poitier in Hollywood by, by a year. And so he, um, audiences were just, it was unbelievable for them, particularly black audiences, to see him. And he was the great, the great hope for, for Hollywood cinema for, uh, at that point, for, for, uh, for black America. It strikes me, he's very talented, he's handsome, he's, uh, but he comes sort of right at the same time that Poitier does. Yeah. Poitier arrives the next year with uh, no way out. It seems like there was room for one and only well, that's one. What I, yeah, there was really only going to be room for one. And, that's, and Poitier ends up being, being the one. You know, one thing else about this movie, um, the language in it, that, um, I mean, they deal openly with the kind of racial taunts that black people had experienced, but also the use of the N-word in the film. So it's, it's getting at things that, that movies um, had, had avoided. And so it, it's, it's a new kind of, of realism and a new kind of social comment coming. I think another thing worth watching is, as, as the audience checks out this movie, and I'm sure some haven't seen it, uh, is that is telling of the changes that were being made is simply the way that James Edwards is introduced in the movie. It's about 10 minutes in. And he comes into the room. Nobody expects him, uh, 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 this person they're waiting for. No one expects this character to be black. And everything stops. Everything And they stops. all look at him. It is the same yeah. reaction that a movie star gets yeah. when they arrive. Yeah. And instantly, the focus of the movie changes from these three guys yeah. Yeah. to this one guy. Yes. Um, and then he delivers yeah. a really good Yeah, he, he, he really does. And it's interesting, some of the close-ups of him, again, in Hollywood films, you haven't gotten this kind of thing where the camera is coming close and capturing the torment of this character. But he's got a great face for the camera. And he had everything it took to be a leading man. Donald, as always, great information. Thanks very much. Thanks, man. Here's the film from 1949, produced by Stanley Kramer, directed by Mark Robeson with a Carl Foreman script, James Edwards in Home of the Brave. Welcome back. I'm Ben Mankiewicz, joined once again by author and film historian Donald Bogle. He's here to add a little context to the 
film we just saw, Home of the Brave. Uh, the ending, very happy, very cheery, and uh, uh, didn't quite feel authentic. No, no, it doesn't. And, you know, this is, again, this, uh, you know, it's a theme now that, that's going to continue with Poitier films, and, and, and it's with us today, this theme of interracial male bonding, the black man, the white man, who league up together. Some of the later films don't even bring in race. Uh, if you see some of the Lethal Weapon films with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Um, here, though, they, they, they do deal with race, but it is the idea that things can work, work out. But it's, um, you know, it is, it is a fantasy. But um, James Edwards, um, it, it, there is that quality about him where, and, and you get it in some of the, the, the close-ups, that there are troubles there, that something is going on with him. He's able to project that. And his career afterwards, um, you know, he kept working. And he had a career, but he didn't get that stardom. But, you know, there are certain figures who came along doing this. But James Edwards is one. He gets to a certain point, and then Poitier takes over. But the other one, of course, and we all know her, is, is Dorothy Dandridge, who right. went much further, yes. much further, and got there, and then found these pressures closing in on her. It's almost like Hollywood felt like there was room for more than one woman, but there was not room for two men. And that, I think, goes to some extent well, to the threat that that so many in white America perceive from black men from, yes. that they didn't fear from, from yes, black women. exactly. The difference in, in, with, with black male sexuality and, um, and female sexuality, Dorothy Dandridge's sexuality, sensuality, couldn't be camouflaged. Right. It, it just couldn't. Nope. What happens, you know, with, with certain male figures where they... Um, the, there, there are wraps put on their their sexuality. They can't. Well, you know. we know right off the bat that it's that on some level it was acceptable to have white men lust after Dorothy Dandridge, yeah. but you cannot have a black male actor lusting after after white women. That yeah. was completely that yeah. made, and you that can't made necessarily, people too uncomfortable. If you see, you know, Harry Belafonte and Joan Fontaine and Island in the Sun, right. you know, that wasn't going to work. So black, black male sexuality was always a problem. And this also, I think, came into James Edwards' career. But the other thing I have to say about James Edwards, we've talked about blacklisting here. James Edwards, I think something that really hurt him, he made a statement and he went public with his statement that the FBI one it comments about from him about Paul Robeson. And we're back to this thing, Robeson, this figure, and Edwards would not. Yeah. And he went public with it. I think that this also affected Edwards. And, you know, his last film was Patton yeah, right. with George C. Scott. He's good in it. He's always good. He is good. good. He's always good. He plays He's his uh, assistant. Yeah. 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 Donald, thanks, as always. Great stuff. Thanks, Ben. Donald and I will return with another problem picture from 1949, a drama starring Ethel Waters, Gene Crane, and Ethel Barrymore, directed by Aaliyah Kazan.